Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at finding missing angles in triangles and quadrilaterals. Now, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is a polygon? Alright, what is a polygon? Now, a polygon is just a plain shape, really a two dimensional object with straight sides. Examples of these include triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons hexagons, septagons, and so on. In this video, we're just going to be focusing on triangles and quadrilaterals. Ah. So, first thing is we need to know the different types of polygons, and we have irregular polygons and regular polygons. Irregular polygons, these are where all the sides and all the angles are equal. So like a square, and, I, and triangle where all the sides are equal, etc. Irregular polygons now, this is just the opposite, so they do not have equal sides and non-equal angles. Hey! Alright, so here are some images of some objects with a different number of sides and also their sides, they are not equal in length. Now hey! triangles are then categorized by either angle or sides. If you're going to categorize triangle by angle, we have the acute triangle and the acute triangle is just a triangle where all of the angles inside the triangle are less than 90 degrees. Then we have what's known as the right angle triangle. The right angle triangle is a triangle with one of the angle being 90 degrees. I will put a little box there to indicate the 90 degrees. Then an obtuse triangle is just a triangle where one angle in the triangle is greater than 90. The other two are less than 90 degrees. And then when we categorize triangles by sides, we have what's known as a scalene triangle, where none of the sides are equal in length. Then we have what's known as the isosceles triangle, where we have two equal sides. Then we have the equilateral triangle, where all the sides are equal in length. Hey! So now, having looked at that, let's look at some questions to find missing angles in different types of triangle. So question one, Shown is a right angle triangle. Work out the size of angle W. So pause and attempt this question. All right, we would have learned that angles in a triangle sum to 180. And so we know that Y plus 90 degrees since it's right angle plus 38 is 180. 90 plus 38 is 128. So Y plus 128 is 180. And if we subtract 128 from 180, that gives us 52. So y is equal to 52 degrees. Nice. So we can put that on the diagram. Work out the size of angle x. Pause the video and attempt. All right. Again, we always start with angles in a triangle sum to 180. And so we add 48 and 86. And let's just put the plus x. And we know that equal 180. 48 and 86 is 134. 134 plus x is 180. So transposing, that means x is 180 minus 134, which is 46 degrees. So we can put that on the diagram, x equals 46 degrees. So here's my question to you. What type of triangle is this? All right, now if you're categorizing it by angle, then we'd say this is an acute triangle. And if you're categorizing it by sides, this would be a scalene triangle. Because hey! none of the sides are equal in length, none of the angles are equal, and all of them are less than 90 degrees. So this is a scalene or an acute triangle. Hey! All right, the next question says, shown below is an isosceles triangle. Work out the size of the angle marked Y. Pause the video and attempt. Now, we always start with, we know angles in a triangle sum to 180, but this time around, since we know that it is isosceles, let's just call the angle over there x, because those two angles, the 77 is going to be equal to x. So what we do know then is that y plus 77 plus 77 equal 180. 77 and 77 is 154. So transposing, we're going to get y is equal to 180 minus 154. 
which is 26 degrees. So y equal to 26 degrees. That is angle y. We can just put that on the diagram. Easy. Let's just look at one more triangle question. So in the triangle, PQR shown below, PQ is equal to QR and QR is equal to PR. What is the name of this type of triangle and what are the values of X and Y? So pause and state. So if you had said that all the sides are equal, so it's an equilateral triangle, you are absolutely right. And so what is the value of X and Y? Both 60 degrees because equilateral triangle, all the sides are equal and all the angles are also equal. Ah. Nice. So now we can move on to the types of quadrilaterals because we looked at triangles, now we're on to quadrilaterals. Now, the different types of quadrilaterals we will focus on are rectangles, square, rhombus, trapezium, kite, and parallelogram. So let's start with a rectangle. So a rectangle, we first need to understand the properties of rectangle. And the first property we must know is that the opposite sides are parallel to each other and they are equal in length. So on this rectangle, we see that B the side on the left will label that length as B and the side on the right will label that as B. Those are equal in length. And we see that the both sides at the top and the bottom will label as A. Those are also equal in length. The next property is that each interior angle is equal to 90 degrees. So we'll see the little box inside of it because all the angles are 90. The sum of all interior angles totals 360. So if you add all of those 90 degrees, you get 360. The diagonals bisect each other, so we can put the diagonals cutting the rectangle and they bisect each other. And both the diagonals are gonna be of the same length. So D1 and D2 there, they're both of the same length. All right, the next one to talk about is a square. Now, the properties of a square is that all four interior angles are equal to 90 degrees, just like the rectangle. But this time, all four sides are congruent, meaning they're equal in length. So we'll put a little line on each of the sides to show that they're all equal in length to indicate it's a square. Hey! The opposite sides of the square are parallel to each other, meaning they're going in the same direction. So we put the arrow right there. The ones with one arrow, those are parallel. And the ones with two arrows, those are parallel. The diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees. And two diagonals of the square are equal in length. The next one to talk about is a rhombus. Now a rhombus, opposite angles are congruent or equal. Opposite angles in the rhombus. The opposite sides are equal and parallel. The diagonals bisect each other. And the sum of any two adjacent or consecutive angles is 180 degrees. Think of it as co-interior angles. All right, and that is rhombus. Then we have trapezium. There's not much really to know about trapezium. We just know that they have exactly one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. So we put on the arrows at the top to show the two sides that are parallel. And the diagonals, they intersect each other. So we put on the two diagonals there and show that they intersect each other. Next, we have the parallelogram. The properties of a parallelogram are as follows. The opposite sides are parallel to each other and congruent, meaning equal in length. So you see where we put on one arrows, those two sides are equal in length and they're also going in the same direction. And those with two hey! arrows, those two sides are congruent and going in the same direction. The opposite angles are congruent. So you see where we put our alpha, those two angles are equal. And where we put the beta, those two angles are equal. The consecutive angles are supplementary. Meaning, alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. Think of it as, remember we looked at lines, co-interior angles sum to 180. So think of it as co-interior angles. And then the two diagonals bisect each other. And each diagonal bisects the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So if you look at it, the diagonals actually form two congruent triangles if we're to zoom in on it. All right, nice. And the last one we wanna talk about is a kite. 
The properties of a kite are as follows. A kite has two pair of adjacent equal sides. So you see the one mark, the one slash on each side indicate those two sides are equal. And the two slash indicates that those two sides are equal. It also has one pair of opposite angles that are equal. So in this case, the opposite angles, they're always going to be obtuse as well. Where we put our beta, those two angles are equal. All right? Nice. So let's look at some questions now involving quadrilateral. So this one says, shown below is a quadrilateral. Work out the size of angle X. Now this one is an irregular quadrilateral. But guess what? We know that the sum of all the angles in a quadrilateral sum to 360. So 101 plus X plus 53 plus 90 degrees equals 360. Adding up all of those angles is 244 degrees plus X. That's 360. Transposing for X, we get 116 degrees. So that angle right there is 116 degrees. Nice. Now, let's look at a more challenging question. Let's say I give you this diagram right here. The diagram above shows a parallelogram. Work out the size of angle X and work out the size of angle Y. So as we know, it is a parallelogram. And so we know that X plus 64 is equal to 180 degrees. Consecutive angles sum to 180. They are supplementary. So transposing, we get X equal 116 degrees. So we put that right there. Now what is going to be angle Y? Now angle Y is going to be 64 because opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. So you see how the properties of parallelogram come into play? Really nice. That's why we must know them. Nice. All right, now let's look at a different question. This is a kite now. It says below is a kite. Calculate the size of angle Y. So pause the video and attempt. All right, now as we pause this video, the first thing we notice is that that angle right there, 80 degrees, we can find the angle on the other side, so let's call that angle X. But in a kite, we said that a kite have two obtuse angles, and those two obtuse angles are equal, so on the other side is also X. Now 80 plus X is 180, because angles on a straight line sum to 180, so X is 100 degrees. Now once we get X to be 100 degrees, we can replace those two angles inside the kite with 100. And so now we know that 100 plus 100 plus 75 plus Y is 360 because angles in a kite sum to 360. So transposing, we're going to get 275 plus Y is 360. So Y is 360 minus 275, which is 85 degrees. Beautiful. So we put that on the diagram, y is 85 degrees. And so that concludes the video for today. So we looked at the properties of triangle. We looked at the properties of quadrilateral to help us to find missing angles in triangles and quadrilateral. That's it for today. So stay tuned and see you next time. Keep on practicing and have a blessed day.